the topic today, facing the challenge of political Islam in Asia, is opposition or engagement the better way forward? I'm Pramit Paul Choudhury. This is Sadanand on this side, and this is Radwan on the other. To well, I, I'm secularism and the issue of, of engagement by the West would I'm, it be counterproductive. I'm glad. I'm glad that Radwan brought up this idea of moderate Muslims because I think this is a very key issue. Um, do we view moderate Muslims the same as we view moderates of any other culture and society, or is it something like the Special Olympics where we have this? We, we, we have this category, this special magical category called moderate Muslim, where for everybody else, when it comes to defining women's rights, or whether it's bad to beat your wife or not, we all agree it's a terrible thing. But somehow when we get into this debate with, 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 with Islamists and so on, everything has to be based on the text. I believe that moderates today, there is a commonality between moderate Chinese, moderate Thais, moderate Japanese, moderate Ecuadorians and moderate everybody else. I don't think you should have a separate standard. And the standards, whether it's on women's rights, whether it's how you treat your minorities, and so on, ought to be the same. So I don't believe that Islamists meet the standard of moderation as the rest of the world sees moderation. But if I understand, your argument is that there's an evolutionary process involved here. Absolutely. But what, what makes it different? Why does it require this to happen in, in an Islamic society? as opposed to the Asian societies that he cited? Well, look, I, if Muslims feel, the majority of Muslims feel that they have to choose between modernity and Islam, guess mm -hmm. what they're going to choose? The majority of them are going to choose Islam. If they, choo if they feel they have to choose between democracy and Islam, the majority of them is going to choose Islam. This is a false choice, a very dangerous choice. Mm -hmm. We have to show and we have to convince them that they don't have to choose between Islam and modernity or between Islam and democracy. But, but do they see their Islamism as being contradictory to either democracy or modernity? Of course not. That's the point. They don't. They don't. They don't see any contradiction between democracy and Islam or modernity and Islam. Right. The question is how do you reconcile it? And how you reconcile it is going to be different in each country because there are cultures. It's not just Islam, by the way. There are cultures, there are uh, norms, there are clans, there are other things that come in the way. That's why Turkey is so different from Saudi Arabia, both of them Muslim countries. But, but I mean, <clears throat> uh, but is this modernity argument, would you, but I, I get the impression the argument here that you're making though, is that especially in the non-Asian uh, Islamic world, that there is a difference between the modernity, democracy, and Islamic groups. And it's very painful, right? I mean, modernization for any poor country is very, very painful. Um, and when you, you know, we come from India and we can sort of see it. There is, a, there is a breakdown of the family. There are you know, notions of women's sexuality change. Uh, there are very, very, it's, it's very, very hard to come to terms with this sort of rapid economic and technological change. So I have a lot of empathy for individual Muslims who are, who are struggling with this. And I have a lot of empathy with people who might turn to religion seeking answers. But that doesn't change the fact that programmatically, these movements tend to, uh, tend to take what is most backward and most regressive and apply it. You've seen it in Iran with the, with the ruling government. You've seen it, you, you saw it with, with Sudan briefly. You see it in Saudi Arabia right now. And so these are, I mean, the, the experiment of Islamic governance is a failed experiment. And there's no reason why we should not recognize the fact that this is a failed experiment and back alternatives that are better. You don't, you don't buy the evolutionary argument that he's making. Let them rule, and over time, they will become something different. I don't believe the pothole theory of democracy. I don't believe the idea. I don't believe that there's any evidence, for example, to show that Hamas has moderated itself. It has not moderated itself. Uh, I don't think that people who are fixing potholes for God are essentially can be moderated by power. I think that's one of those great myths. This strikes me as one of the key Key well, disappoint <coughs> the, the key differences here. Now, the, the, uh, I think the evidence is overwhelming that this mm -hmm. has happened and is happening. Hamas has been in power only one year, so I think it's too early to judge them. But even in that year, they have moved toward, uh, I think, ultimately recognizing Israel and having a peace, peace with Israel, even in that one year. There are, it's also a, a very important to understand, within Hamas, within the Muslim Brotherhood, within any Islamic movement, 
there are differences. There are people who are more violent. There are people who are more moderate. There, there is an internal debate in these movements. But to me, to try to exclude Hamas or any, I mean, they represent 40 to 50 percent of the population, whether we agree with them or not. They represent 40 to 50 percent of the population. It's very, it's essential. I don't think we have a choice that, than mm -hmm. to engage them. And the evidence is clear that when they participate in the political process, from Morocco to Indonesia, to Turkey, to every country you can study, where they are allowed to participate in the political process, they become much more pra pragmatic and practical and moderate. When they are not, they turn to extremism and violence because they have no, no way of participating in the process.